Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number four for chapter two. In this video, we go through one more example on the method of integrating factors. The example is this one. It says ty prime plus 2y equal 4t squared and the uh, initial condition is y at 1 equals 2. So step 1, we rewrite the equation into the standard form. We divide both sides by t, so we'll have 1 here. Then we get y prime plus 2 over t, y equals divided by t, I get 4t. And then um, this operation is possible if we assume that t is not zero. Then we have the two functions p of t, which is what's in front of y, so it's 2 over t, and g of t, which is the right hand side, that is 4t. Next step is to compute the integrating factor, mu of t. Here we need to work out an integral, the integral of uh, pt dt, which is 2 over t dt. And then that integral is um, just 2 ln of t. And all this is inside the exponential function. And here we play the standard trick. We move the number 2 inside the natural log to have ln of t squared. Then the exponential function and the natural log are inverse functions of each other, so they cancel, and we get simply t squared. And now we can put all this in the final formula for the general solution. So the general solution is inverse of mu, which is t to the negative 2, and integral of mu times g. So here this is g and this is mu. So all together we get 4 times t to the power 3. Okay, and integrating this we have t to the power 4. And we have to remember to carry on the constant here inside the bracket. And uh, finally, we can distribute this term onto both, and we will get t squared, because of these terms, plus c times t to the negative 2. Okay, so what about the behavior of um, the solution? And we see that in the solution, we have two terms. One is t squared, and the other is t to the negative 2. So this term is present, but the second term here has a constant c in front of it, which is an arbitrary constant, and uh, it will be determined by the initial condition. So for different values of initial condition, we will get different values of c, and the solution would behave quite differently. Okay, so let's repeat the general solution here. And now let's plug in the initial condition, which is given as y1 equals 2. Okay, so plugging in t to be 1, we'll get 1 squared, which is 1, plus c times 1 to the negative 2, which is 1. And that shall equal to 2. So we can solve this equation, 1 plus c equal 2, to get c equals 1. Okay, so finally, now we can form the solution. yt equals t squared plus 1 over t squared. And here there is a little trick, um, because we assumed that t is not 0. So on what interval is this solution valid? 
Here I have written that this solution is valid for t bigger than zero. Why is that? Well, this condition actually comes from the fact that the initial condition is given at t equals 1, y at 1 equals 2. Okay? And uh, since t cannot be 0, then the interval for the solution can start from t equal 1 and go to the right to plus infinity, but as it goes to the left, and it cannot cross t equals 0 because the solution is not defined right there. Therefore, we have this condition. Okay, so here, um, just for fun, we present a graph where um, various solutions are plotted for this equation. And different solutions using different initial data and that can be defined on different um, intervals for t. And the one for our solution, which says um, solution with initial condition y1 is defined here equal to, that's the cross sign that's being marked. So this is the solution with this dotted line. That's the one um, we found. And as you can see, if the initial conditions are different, if it moves a bit up here, then the solution will be this curve and only defined for t bigger than zero. And then if it goes further down, then you will have this solution that goes from negative infinity as t approaches zero to um, positive infinity as t goes to infinity. And in between, there is a special solution um, that ends at y equals zero to be zero. It ends right there and uh, it's this branch, okay? And then there is the mirroring part that um, if the initial condition is given, say, at t equals negative one, and is right here, and then you will have a solution defined for t less than zero, a branch like that. And then further down, you will have a solution like this, and then there is a special one that actually ends at zero when t is zero. Okay, so um, and the graph here is uh, generated using um, this program called MATLAB. Okay, that's all I have to say for this example. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.